Hey, welcome back to another shop video. Well, today the project we're gonna be making isn't really a shop project. It's more of an extra little project that I do for fun with my students sometimes. So really any teacher can do this in their classroom or you can make one at home. Let's see what we're doing. We are just going to be making this cool little air rocket and then I'm gonna show you a way to make a quick, easy launcher as well and also show you a couple of other ways you can launch it. The first thing to decide is the size of the main body, the fuselage of your rocket. Um, how thick, how wide you want that to be. What I've figured out or what I've tended to use is this half inch PVC sprinkler pipe. Um, now it's called half inch or 12 millimeters. I don't know where that measurement actually comes from. The inside diameter is about 11 sixteenths or about uh, 17 to 18 millimeters. Uh, but this is a good size and this is available at Home Depot or any of your local stores and it's very inexpensive. I then took that long piece of pipe and cut it into a bunch of shorter pieces so that each student or group of students or whoever's doing this project can have their own piece to work from. We're going to use this to build the rocket body out of paper. So for this next part you're going to need a piece of paper and that little piece of pipe and some tape. Any kind of tape will do. Take the piece of paper and roll it around the pipe, keeping the paper snug as you go. Once it's all tight, much better to have your tape ready to go. Tape it together like this and ensure that it slides easily on the pipe. You want it to be snug, but you want it to slide off easily so that when we shoot it off the launcher, it will come off quickly. The next step is to close off one end. With the type of pressures that we're going to have, if we just put a nose cone over the end here, um, we'll probably get a bit of leakage or potentially it will blow the nose cone off. So if you just pull that pipe back a centimeter to a centimeter and a half, and then you just fold the ends over like this, and then just tape the end of the rocket closed with a couple of pieces of tape. That will ensure that we get a nice tight seal at the end of the rocket and that the nose cone doesn't pop off with the pressure. Next, we're gonna make the nose cone. For the nose cone, I'm using a piece of paper, construction paper, it's just a little bit thicker than regular paper. And I have a lid from a mason jar here. That's just gonna be my circle. So we're gonna place that over top of the paper and we're just gonna trace around and get a nice circle. You could also use a compass if you want, but I find this is a good size for a nose cone for this rocket. We're going to quickly cut that out with our scissors, being as close as we can to the circle. It doesn't matter if it's exactly perfect. And once we're done cutting out the circle, we can make a little dot just about where we think the middle is like that and we're going to be cutting a section out of the circle that's like a quarter of the circle making like pac-man with his mouth wide open or something along those lines now this is the part that students sometimes find the most difficult is how do we make a cone out of something that looks like that so the way we want to do that is we want to take those two edges and just kind of fold them over each other. There's our cone like that. And then to make it a little bit smaller, we just keep pushing those edges around until it's about the right size. And then you can just tape it closed with a piece of tape. So now you have a cone that looks like that. And it's just about the right size for the rocket. That's a, maybe a little big, so I might trim a little bit off the edge. I can just trim a couple of millimeters off all the way around. And now my diameter is nearly perfect. So there's the nose cone for the rocket. The next thing we're going to do is make some fins for our rocket. Now I use a little bit heavier cardstock for that. And there are lots of lessons that can go along with this about the aerodynamics of rockets and why rockets have fins and how many fins each rocket should have. And I'll leave that up to you and whoever you're doing this project with. Um, what I usually suggest to students is to do four fins. Uh, three fins is um, great, 
but with three fins you have to be very specific with your measurements around the rocket whereas if you have four you're just going to have two across from each other and two across from each other so to make fins out of this you can choose what kind of size fins you want to make i can just cut a piece across like that up down up down there's four fins that are all pretty close to the same so all i have to do is line them all up with each other like that and to get them all to be the same i can just snip the ends off like this and then cut off a little bit extra on there there were a couple that were a little bit bigger there we go and there there's my four fins that are all pretty much the same now we're gonna glue everything in place. Now I love having a nice little stand, like a vise here, where I can just put that piece of pipe and so it kind of holds everything while I'm working on it. Uh, if you don't have that, you can just do it on a table. Uh, maybe you can tape the pipe to a table or you can wedge it between a couple of things. But we're gonna start with the nose cone first. So I just take my nose cone, take my handy dandy glue gun. I'm actually gonna glue gun the top here, just around the edge, like that. And I'm just going to push my nose cone in place. Trying to keep it as straight as possible. <laughs> and because it's hot glue, we don't have to hold it for too long. Should be good to go. As far as the fins go, I'm going to start out by just holding the rocket body like this. And I'm just going to run a bead of glue down as straight as I can and then I'm going to attach one fin okay. trying to keep that as, uh, as straight in line with the body of the rocket as possible and then if I flip it right upside down like that gravity will help keep that straight while I do the next fin straight up and down like this And that's pretty good. And then I'll flip it straight up and down because this one's dry. And then I'm just gonna wait for a second or two. Now, obviously you could have this take much longer if you had students measure every single spacing for the fin, which is probably a good idea, but we're trying to get this done as quick as possible today. So now that those are fairly dry, we're gonna flip it sideways and this fin would go directly halfway in between the first two. Like this. Same thing, keep it as straight as possible. Flip it upside down, let gravity hold it straight. And do the last fin. Like that. One of the other neat things that you could do with students that I have done before is taking the fins and putting the fins on an angle like this, um, which will actually cause the rocket to rotate and spiral as it flies off the launcher, uh, which is a whole other set of aerodynamics you can talk about. All right, there we go. So we can take it off the holder now. And that is our rocket essentially finished. And kids could decorate, you can decorate it as much as you like. Let's shoot it off the launcher, see how it goes. And then we'll talk about what you can do to make different types of launchers based on what you have around. Okay, let's see how it goes. So an easy launcher that you can make at home is just going to use a two liter pop bottle, some more of that pipe with a 90 degree elbow, or you can use a 45 and some tape. Let's put it together. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just take one of those pieces of pipe and push it into the bottle. It should fit almost perfectly if you use this size pipe. And then you're just going to tape the join together like this. Just to make sure no air escapes and it's nice and snug. Then take that connector piece and just push it on there. The connections are so snug that you probably don't even need to, but you could tape those two joins if you want. Then I've got one more piece here. And if we just take that piece and we kind of tape it onto the bottom of the bottle like that, and you can do a better job than I do here, but
What that will do is it will hold the launch stick upright while we stomp on the bottom. Or you can pick the whole thing up and shoot it any direction you want. The next one involves using a shop vac and taking the vacuum cleaner hose and putting it in the blower side of the shop vac and then just taping a piece of that pipe into the end of the shop vac like that and then turning it on. My all-time favorite though is having an apparatus like this that uses the shop compressed air through a pipe. Just put a piece of that plastic pipe on the end of it. Got a little protractor there for angles. And with this, you can get some real distance. You might be able to see that target way off in the distance on the very far wall there. We're gonna see how close we can get. It's probably about, I don't know, 60 feet away. I was a little low, but it definitely went that far. With this launcher, I brought it outside and I've definitely had rockets go well over 100 feet with it. Uh, so if you have access to shop air and you can put something like this together, uh, it'll definitely be a lot of fun. But those other two launching uh, ways are pretty good too. Have fun with it.